It's not the house that's haunted. It's your son. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. Also, welcome to another episode of Monsters 101, where we look at and study the monsters of horror, taking a look at the villains, the ghosts, demons and creatures that haunt the screen. For this episode, we're looking at the lipstick-faced demon, the main antagonist of the 2010 Insidious and a cameo antagonist for the 2013 Insidious Chapter 2, 2015 Insidious Chapter 3 and the 2018 Insidious The Last Key. The lipstick face demon is the scariest and most malevolent entity that inhabits the realm known as the Further. It is a demonic creature, slightly humanoid in appearance, with the sole intention of causing pain. In Insidious, the lipstick face demon captures a gifted astral projector, young Dalton Lambert, with the intention to inhabit the boy's empty body. It torments the Lambert family and their team of paranormal investigators to achieve its goal. Just a heads up that this episode will include spoilers for the entire Insidious franchise, so just bear that in mind if you haven't seen the films yet. The Lipstick Face Demon is the original concept of creative team, writer and actor Lee Winnell, and director and co-creator James Wan. The pair had an idea to make a horror movie based around astral projection, as they felt this hadn't been explored before. In their words, Insidious is a haunted house movie that turns into a possession movie that turns into an astral projection movie. For the film, the pair created not only a multitude of entities, including ghosts and demons, but also created a fictional realm that is found between heaven and hell, the further. And this is a place that astral projectors, if they're really talented, can actually explore this world, but it's very dangerous because you, you are mixing with people that are dead and you're a living soul. According to James Wan, he and Winnell wanted to show an astral dimensional world that is, quote, hinged in our own world. He describes it as a very heightened world, but it's very grounded in reality as well. While Winnell describes the further as just a name for something that is beyond our world, something further than our world. When talking about creating their vision for the further, Lee Winnell explains, I think that other world gives you license to be a bit more theatrical. According to him, they were inspired by directors like Dario Argento and took a quote, very operatic approach. Argento has also come up as an inspiration for them when creating Saw, the use of vivid colours and how using it and using it well can make your audience react and feel fear in a much more visceral way. And talking of the use of colour, one describes red and black as a colour palette that he loves. He feels that it really adds to the psychology of the film. And James's design for the colour of red within Insidious is to represent the evil within the film. That's why red and black is the colour palette used for the lipstick face demon. The operatic style wasn't just used in creating the further, but also in creating the monsters. James Wan said, I wanted to create characters that are a bit out there, very theatrical in the way they look. According to Winnell, they wanted to have a multitude of ghosts that they didn't just want one villain. We thought of it like a pyramid. At the top, there's the scariest one, the most malevolent. And then below him are almost like these minions that are more benign, but still scary. But they both knew that they wanted one central entity that would be the scariest and that would stand apart from the rest. And that is our subject of today, the lipstick face demon. According to James Wan, it is called the lipstick face demon because he literally paints his face with a red lipstick. Although in the script, it is referred to as a red-faced creature. Wan attributes its painting its face to acting like a clown. It's his twisted way of trying to make himself look like a good, happy person to try and entice you to him. Winnell adds to this by explaining He's the one who's out there trying to suck in the spirits of innocent people, especially children, try and get them out of their bodies, to draw them out into the further so that he can then go in and inhabit their body. According to Elena Sabaduquia, the makeup department head, when designing the look for the demon, James Wan had specified to her I want him to be bald and I want him to be paunchy with hair on all the wrong places and he wears lipstick and then he just kind of smears it all over his face. Wan describes the demon as, quote, almost being a character out of some crazy mystical carnival as an oddity in a show. An interesting fact about the lipstick face demon is that it is actually played by the film's composer, Joseph Bishara. 
Bishara has worked as the composer on the first four Insidious movies, multiple movies in the Conjuring universe, and Malignant. He also portrayed Bathsheba in The Conjuring and Malthus in Annabelle and Annabelle Creation. You do find that James Wan has particular people that he likes to re-collaborate with. Little is known about the origins of the lipstick face demon. However, it is a demon entity and so we can assume that it was once an angel of heaven and member of Lucifer's army. Lucifer and his army were expelled and banished from heaven after Lucifer's disobedience and uprising. The fallen angels would go on to become the devil and his army of demons. The lipstick face demon's more recent history begins when Elise Rainier, a demonologist with the power to astral project, enters the further in order to help a young woman named Quinn, who has been targeted by a spirit called Man Who Can't Breathe in Insidious Chapter 3. Whilst in the further, Elise and her abilities catch the attention of the lipstick face demon, as Elise is able to astral project, and that means that she leaves her body available as an empty vessel. The demon follows her back to our reality and plays with Elise by making her at first believe that it is the spirit of her recently deceased husband, Jack. The lipstick faced demon keeps its attention on Elise with the hope to ultimately possess her empty body until Elise again visits the further, this time to help her nieces in Insidious The Last Key. While there, she opens one of the many red doors in the further onto a young boy in an attic named Dalton Lambert. The demon's attention shifts to Dalton. After all, he too can astral project, but he is a far easier target because he's a child and believes that his astral projecting is merely him dreaming. One night after falling and hitting his head in the attic, Dalton astral projects too far in the further and is captured by the lipstick face demon. He is kept there for weeks in order to weaken the link to his physical body, which in our reality now appears to be in a coma. While being a demonic entity, the lipstick face demon is actually humanoid in appearance. It has jet black skin, yellow eyes, sharp white teeth, a pointed nose and a forked tongue. It's bald with black hair running around the back and sides of its head. It has long furry legs, hooves at the end, a long tail and claws which it accentuates with metal points. The demon paints its face with red lipstick in order to appear more enticing. We never hear the demon speak, but it does emit a clicking sound. And in her dream, Josh's mum Lorraine is able to converse with the demon and claims to still be able to hear its voice in her waking life. While the demon walks around on two legs and hooves, it is also able to scale walls and ceilings with great force. Like most demonic entities, the lipstick face demon haunts people and not places. It resides in the further but longs to possess a human body in order to inflict pain and suffering. The demon targets humans who have the ability to astral project. Astral projectors, or travellers, as demonologist Elise Rainier likes to call them, are people who have the ability to leave their physical body and travel to different places in astral form. While the person astral projects, they leave their physical body as an empty vessel, which a ghost or demon is able to possess if the link between the astral body and the physical body is weakened enough. And according to Elise, a demon is able to smell an empty vessel. In Elise's words, some of the souls of the dead try to possess an empty vessel or body because they crave life, a chance to live again. But there are other entities more malevolent that have a more insidious agenda. And then there is the lipstick faced demon who seeks a body for one reason, to cause pain to others. As we know, the lipstick face demon has latched onto Dalton as its target. This is because Dalton is a very accomplished astral projector again in Elise's words, and has been doing this in his sleep since he was very young. But Elise explains that Dalton wasn't afraid because he believed that they were just dreams. And because he wasn't afraid, one night he journeyed too far into the further and that's how he ended up being captured by the lipstick face demon. An entity from the further can't just walk into a body any time that takes their fancy. It takes time, it takes energy. The longer Dalton's astral body is away from his physical body, the weaker 
weaker the link gets and the easier it is for a ghost or demon to possess him. Dalton's astral body is kept chained up in the lipstick face demon's lair in the further, and back in our reality, his physical body has the appearance of being in a coma, and so his parents, Josh and Renee, take him to hospital to have tests conducted. But when the doctors are unable to figure out what is causing it, Dalton is returned home and kept under medical care. The lipstick face demon is able to affect people that are close to its target and its activity. We see in Insidious that Renee has a dream about a presence in Dalton's room, creating handprints on his bedroom window. We also see that Lorraine, Josh's mum, has a dream of the Lambert's house. She dreams that while the family is sleeping, she can feel someone awake in the house. She walks into Dalton's room and sees a shadow shape standing in the corner. She asks the demon who it was and it replies, a visitor. And when she asks it what it wants, it merely stretches out an arm, points at Dalton with its claw and replies, Dalton. The lipstick faced demon, once it has captured its target, has to do very little other than wait for the link between astral and physical body to weaken and sever. However, it will fight back if anyone tries to prevent it from being able to possess the physical body. We see this in Insidious when the Lambert family call on help from demonologist Elise and paranormal investigators Spectral Sightings, whose members consist of Stephen Spex and Tucker. Elise is able to see the lipstick face demon and knows its intention, and so decides to hold a seance in order to communicate with Dalton in the further and guide him back home. While speaking to Dalton, he says that if it hears him, it will hurt him. When Spex asks who will hurt him, Dalton replies the man with fire on his face. Dalton is worried that the demon will hear Spex and tells him to be quiet, but it's too late. The lipstick faced demon heard Spex and isn't exactly happy about the group's interference. Channeling through Elise, it repeats profanities and many threats of violence. The demon uses Dalton as a puppet and attacks the Lamberts, Elise, Spex, and Tucker. We see further evidence of the demon's ability to use Dalton as a puppet earlier in the film, when Dalton's room is trashed after Lorraine sees the demon face behind Josh. It's unclear at the time if this was done by Dalton or the demon, until we later see the evidence of the demon's ability. The lipstick face demon resides in the further. According to Elise, the Further is a world far beyond our own, and yet is all around us. Quote, a place without time as we know it. It's a dark realm filled with the tortured souls of the dead. A place not meant for the living. End quote. The Further has a colour palette of grey, blue and black. Honestly, it looks as though the saturation has been turned down. And the whole floor is swirling with a pale white mist. The ghosts in the further are frozen in time, but time itself in the further is not linear. Through the use of various and many red doors dotted throughout the further, the spirits and demons can access any period of time. And in some cases, it appears as though certain doors are attached to specific entities. The lipstick face demon's red dot is located in the attic of the Lambert's first residence in Insidious, and it leads directly to the demon's lair. The demon's lair is incredibly operatic and theatrical in design. The walls are red with deep red drapes, and like the rest of the further, the floor is covered in a pale white mist. The lair is dimly lit, lit only with the light of hundreds of candles, tall church candles, red candles in black iron wall candelabras and chandeliers. The lair is adorned with masquerade masks, cherubs, gargoyles, marionette puppets, and as the script describes it, discarded children's toys. There are also chains and a gramophone on which the demon plays the song Tiptoe Through the Tulips. The demon also has an ornate mirror which it uses to apply the lipstick to its face and what appears to be a homemade metal claw sharpening machine. The look of it reminds me very much of the old wind style sewing machines. The lipstick demon is an entity which appears to be unkillable. We have as yet seen no evidence in the Insidious films that it is. However, there are ways to defeat it and prevent a possession. Being able to see what you are dealing with makes it easier to deal with. We see evidence that our technology is able to pick up the presence of the entity. 
We see Tucker's video camera pick up the demon using Dalton as a puppet and Lorraine's family camera pick up images of the bride in black. If you have the ability to astral project, then there is always the option to journey to the further and rescue anyone in need. But of course, that isn't an option to everyone. So what about things you can do from our reality? Well, we see that Elise has the power to expel the demon from using Dalton as a puppet and send it back to the further simply by placing her hand on its head and repeatedly commanding to it to leave the vessel. By the end of Insidious, Dalton's astral body has returned to his physical body and so he is now no longer an option for the demon to possess. And seeing as how Josh's physical body has been possessed by the Bride in Black and Elise killed by the Bride in Black, the lipstick faced demon may not have been killed, but it was certainly defeated and now has to find a new target. We see by the end of Insidious Chapter 2 that Spex and Tucker, on the advice of Elise's spirit, visit a family whose daughter Alison was in an accident and has since been mute and bound to a wheelchair. It transpires that Alison also has the ability to astral project and while she was in the further, she caught the eye of a certain entity. Spex and Tucker explain to the family that when Alison was resurrected, she brought something back with her. Not just one thing, but many things, and they're living in the house now. Elise's spirit tries to speak to Alison, but hears a familiar clicking sound, which lets her know that the lipstick-faced demon has now found a new target. It's unclear what happens next, seeing as how the following Insidious movies were both prequels, but with Spex and Tucker on the case and the guidance of Elise's spirit, it's safe to say that the lipstick-faced demon won't have had a smooth ride. With the release of Insidious the Red Door in just a couple of weeks, perhaps we will get a conclusion to not only the Lambert story, but also the lipstick-faced demon story, and perhaps we will learn of a way to finally kill it. Thank you guys for attending another Monsters 101. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. As always, let me know your thoughts on this week's monster down below. What are your thoughts on the lipstick face demon? I personally think the demon has a fantastic look and I just love the theatrical feel to its lair. I also think it's pretty fair to say that the lipstick face demon appears in one of horror's best and most loved jump scares right? I'm really excited for Insidious the Red Door to see what continuation of the story we get, seeing as how this is the first film we've had since chapter two that will be set after the events of chapter one and two. If you're new here and enjoyed this episode, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and become part of the What the Horror family. Also, don't forget to check out my other episodes of Monsters 101. I will leave a link to that playlist in the end screen of this episode. Fingers crossed my next episode will be the one that I've been researching the last few weeks. Well, around making the weekly episode as well. So keep an eye out for that one. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys. Bye.